Hello everybody and welcome to Scalable Scripts YouTube channel. In this video you will learn how to create a multilingual site using React as the frontend. If you need to translate your website, this is the right tutorial for you, because we will do the translation implementation step by step and by using different examples. If you want to know how to build the backend in Python, check our video Python API translations. Let's create now the React app. First, we need to install React and you can do it by typing in your terminal npx create-react-app and now we need the name of the project and I will call it react-frontend. That's it, we created the React project. Now let's sit it to our project and write npm start. Open the browser in localhost port 3000 and you will see our running React app. Now let's change a little bit the HTML. Go to app.js and remove this HTML here. Also remove the logo import. Now go to public slash index.html and let's add the bootstrap slide sheet. Now let's create a header component. Create a folder called header and inside create a file called index.js. Go to index.js and let's create the component now. First we need to import React from React. Now let's create a class called header that extends the component. We also have to import component too. Each React component has a render method to render the HTML it generates. To render HTML we need to write return and add our HTML. I pasted some HTML for a simple language dropdown. Now we need to import our header component to our app.js file and we also have to add it inside the main div as a HTML tag. We get an error when we open the browser, so let's export the header in the header component. And secondly, we forgot to add a dot here. So let's try it again now. Open the browser and now we can see the dropdown. Now let's store the current dropdown value to the local storage. On the select element, add an onChange listener that will call this dot change method. Now let's create a change method that accepts option as a parameter. Inside the method, write local storage set item lang option dot target dot value. This will store the selected language in the local storage. Now we need to reload the page. So write window dot location dot reload. If we test it in the browser, we will see that the local storage stores the items correctly, but the drop-down always stays in English. Let's fix this now. Inside the render method, write const lang equals local storage, get item lang or en. So we will get the current language storage value and the default will be English. To set the selected value in the drop-down, in React we need to write value equals curly brackets and the lang value variable we created. We can see now that the local storage value is in German and the drop down value is also in German. And if we change the language, it will keep its value. Now we need to call our API, but React doesn't provide any function that makes HTTP requests out of the box. That's why we need to install Axios package, which is focused on HTTP requests. Open the terminal and write npm install Axios. Now let's create the post component. Create a folder called posts and inside create a file called index.js. Open the file and write import react component from react. Now create a class called posts that extends the component and don't forget to export the component. Let's create the render method and for now we'll just return an opposed text. Now go to app.js and import the posts we just created. 
and we will add it below the header component. You can see the no post message in the browser. Now we'll create a get request inside the Axios method. Axios will run after the component is mounted, so we need to add a React lifecycle hook called component did mount. Now we need to import Axios from Axios. Now let's write Axios get HTTP localhost port 5000 slash post. In the end, we will add dot then and we will console log the response. Now open the browser and click inspect. We will see that the request was sent successfully and we got the data. Now we have to loop this data and show them in the browser. The way React communicates is advanced the change state of the app. So in order for us to show the posts is that we change the state of the app that we receive the posts. Let's see how to do it. First create a state attribute that is equal to an empty object. Then remove the console log and create a variable called posts that is equal to response.data. Then write this dot set state, curly brackets and add posts inside. This is the way React changed the app state. Now in the render method create a variable called posts that is equal to this dot state dot posts. Now at the condition if the post is set we need to return an HTML. So we need to loop our post with a map function and for each post we need to return this HTML. So we are returning just the post title and the post description. They show correctly but the CSS doesn't look right. That's because app.css is interfering with the styles. Let's delete it now. Also, we need to remove the import in the app.js file. Now the posts look correct. Now we have to add the images. I added the images in the post directory. Now in the post loop create a variable called emg which is equal to require the images directory plus the image name. Now in the HTML create an emg tag that has the source of the variable that we just created and the class name of emg minus fluid. The images are shown correctly. Now we have to translate the posts. To translate the posts we need to change the accept language header. Axios provides an easy way of changing the global headers. Let's go to the main index.js file and import Axios. Now write axios.defaults.headers.common inside write accept minus language equals to local storage dot get item lang or en. This will set the headers for each HTTP request made with Axios. Open the browser and you can see that the posts are translated correctly. We will make now a small refactor. Let's go to index.js and write axios.defaults.baseurl equals let's go to the component now and cut localhost port 5000 URL and paste it into the base URL. Now each HTTP request will be much more cleaner because we won't write the localhost 5000 part. React i80 next is a package that I will use to translate the frontend. Let's install it now. I added the translations that we will use in the source directory. Open the terminal and write npm install react i18 next. When it's done, we need to also install i18 next. Now close the terminal and create a file called i18n.js in the source directory. Go to the file and write import i18n 
from i18 next. Then import init react i80 next from react i80 next. We have to import each JSON file translation we have. Now create a variable called resources which is equal to open curly brackets and here we will specify for each translation language which file to use. Now write iatn.use, we'll use the init react i80 next object and we need to initialize it with dot init and inside add the resources variable we created. Default language which is an and other default values required by the package. In the end write export default iatn. Then we need to import this file to index.js. The package is installed now, so let's use it in our component. Go to post component and import i18 next from react i18 next. Then scroll down and add this HTML after the post description. Now let's translate this by text. Replace the by text in brackets with i80 next dot t and inside put by. Open the browser and change the language. We can see that the by text doesn't change. That's because we didn't tell i80 next to change the language. Let's do that now. First we will import i18 next from i80 next. Second we will cut this code and add it into a variable. Now write i18 next dot change language and add the lang variable we created. Open the browser now and you will see that the by text get translated. Let's create the validation messages now. But first I translated the input placeholder. Now go to buy button and add an on click listener. The listener will call the handle click method with a post ID as a parameter. Now let's create the handle click function and console log the post ID. Open the browser and click inspect. Then click the buy button. We will see that we are console logging the post ID. Now we need to get the quantity. Go to input and add an on change listener. The listener will call the handle change function along with the post ID and the change event as a parameter. Let's create the handle change function now. Before we make changes, let's add a global attribute, quantities which is equal to an empty array. Now in the handle change function, write this dot quantities of this post ID equals to event dot target dot value. In the handle click function, let's console log the quantity of the post ID. If we are getting an error, unexpected use of event, that's because we forgot to add here the event. We do not have errors now. Let's insert the quantity and click the buy button. We see that we are console logging the right value. Now we have to send this value as a post request. Let's remove the console log and send the post request to posts slash post ID and send the quantity as a parameter. In the end, we will just console log the response. Open the browser and insert a quantity of 5 and click buy. So this is the not enough error. The post request works fine. If we insert a quantity of 1, we will console log congratulations. Now replace the console log with alert i18 next.t and the parameter is res.message. Let's test it in the browser. Insert a quantity of 1 and click buy. So we are seeing an alert and the message is in the German. In German. So it works fine. Now let's handle the case when we will get an error. 
we'll use the same code to alert the translated message. If we test it in the browser, we will see that the error case works fine too. Now we have to add some styles for the Arabic language. Go to index.js and write document.documentElement. Dot length equals to the length variable. Now go to index.css and write HTML with a length attribute of year and all tags after this will have text align right. If we open the browser, we will see that the Arabic text is aligned to the right and the other texts are aligned to the left. Thank you for watching our video and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more upcoming programming tutorials. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to leave them in the comment section below. See you in the next video.